Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and uh, I have on my uh, show a, a guest that I will be working with very closely, um, really starting in January. Matthew Wells, Matt Wells, uh, welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Dale? Uh, great, great. And so Matt is the director of the SBDC of, of Northwest Jersey that is going to be part of Fairleigh Dickinson University really within the Rothman Institute where I'm the executive director. And so Matt and I are going to be working on this SBDC program. So I'm excited to have him on the show so he can really talk about what SBDC does and, and how SBDC can really be of service to, to small businesses for free. And so uh, if you have a business, listen up because there are SBDCs everywhere. So, so Matt, I always like to begin with where people grew up and, and how they got to do what they're doing. So, so where were you born and where did you go to school and how did you get into the SBDC movement? Yeah, so I'm originally from Minnesota. I, I was born and raised in St. Cloud, Minnesota. My father was a professor at St. Cloud State University. So I really kind of grew up in the shadow of the university. Um, and like I said, I was born and raised there, spent a lot of years, multiple degrees at St. Cloud State. Um, and during that time, um, I also owned and operated a small business um, through my undergraduate and graduate studies. And then once um, I finalized my MBA at St. Cloud State, um, I, was, I was brought into the, the SBDC locally as a student intern. And that sort of sparked a, a, a new, I guess, uh, drive inside of me for entrepreneurships. And I really started to understand how small businesses operated, how they grew, how they, you know, really took on um, the world around them. And I grew up within the SBDC and I worked my way up through student intern, um, all my way to consultant. And um, once I moved out to the East Coast here, I saw an opportunity here at this center and I came on as director and took over here. So it's sort of grown up and grown in um, within the SBDC network. Well, and, and, and that really, and that's great experience. And as I've gotten to know you, 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 that experience really comes in very handy. You know, my personal experience, I got my MBA from Wharton and, you know, we're looking at what kind of summer jobs and this SBDC opportunity for me to be a consultant at the Wharton Small Business Development Center. And uh, that was my best experience. It got me into consulting. I worked after that for 11 years at Deloitte Consulting, um, but really developed this interest in entrepreneurship. And so here I am running the Entrepreneurial Center with a show on entrepreneurship. And so I really credit the SBDC for, for a lot of the stuff that I'm doing as, as you do for, for the stuff that you're, you're doing. So, so Matt, you know, what is the SBDC? And I'm starting to call it the SBDC movement because I think entrepreneurship is growing. I think, you know, uh, you know if you're an entrepreneur, a new entrepreneur, and you don't know about the SBDC, you've got you've to do some more research. So, so what is the SBDC and, and uh, you know, where can you find one? So SBDC is there located in every state, every ter territory in the country. Um, it it's based on population. So like in the state of New Jersey, we're one of 12 centers here. Um, so throughout the country, depending on where you are, you'll either have a, a center in your backyard or a satellite office possibly. And usually they're attached to institutions of higher learning. So community college, universities, um, sometimes they're on campus, sometimes they're kind of in like an in-between where they may be in a downtown, like a, a growing area of the downtown uh, where they can kind of connect the academia world with the business world. So um, that's pretty much where you'll find SBDCs. They're kind of that in-between between academia and the business community. Um, but pretty much what we do depends on the day. So some days, you know, we can be therapists, but most of the right. days, yeah. you know, we're straight on business consultants. Uh, we have at our centers usually a vast uh, array of consultants that are specialized in certain areas. Um, so at this center, you know, I have people that are specialized in e-commerce and social media. Um, I've got uh, other consultants that deal with international trade and accounting and bookkeeping. Um, we've got ex-bankers and CPAs. And we, we, you know, every center sort of brings it in a sort of a generalized, specialized, um, you know, pool of consultants to aid their community um, with whatever they're looking for. So every 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 center is a little bit different you know we we focus around morristown which is you know fairly urban suburban and then we also deal with the rural areas and it's also in warrens county so um you know each center has to tailor their their clientele and their offerings of their consultants we also provide usually um free or little to no cost uh, training and seminars and webinars throughout the year too so our consulting is always free because that's funded directly through the sba and then depending on um, the tailoring of our services through trainings and seminars um, we can also do things that way as well. It really is, uh, and, and it's funded by the federal government, right? So yes, our yes. tax dollars pay for this. 
So it's something that we should, we should take advantage of. And, and so, so Matt, you know, uh, um, do you talk to businesses that are just getting started? Do you talk to people with business ideas? Obviously, you talk to experienced businesses, but, but you know, what is, uh, how far along does someone have to be before they can approach you and the SBDC? Pretty much in any stage of the business life cycle. Um, you know, majority of our time, you know, probably, you know, 50 to 60 percent of our time is spent on people kind of in that pre-venture state. So they have their idea. They, they're looking for market research or looking for somebody to say, okay, what are the next steps? How do I do a business plan? How do I form the business? How do I uh, seek financing? So, you know, majority of our time is kind of spent in people in that stage. But we also do spend a lot of time with helping people grow their business. So once you get open started, you have revenue coming in, we can help you with marketing plans and long-term strategies and those sorts of things. We also um, do focus on turnaround. So if we're working with banks and lenders that have clients that, you know, they ran into some troubles, we can come in look, open up the books, reevaluate, give them some ideas moving forward. And then also businesses on the other end that they're looking to, you know, either either sell the business or put up a, put up a plan to pass it on to their children or grandchildren and those sorts of things. So we deal with pretty much the entire life cycle of business. Well, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's fascinating. And so, so, so when you, when you're, you're a business, you're a new business, you, you learn about the local SBDC, how do you reach out to them? Do you have to sign forms? Do you just call them up? Do you just show up? How, how, does, that, how does that work? Yeah, so typically most of our clients, they kind of come through um, our, our online portal. Right. Uh, you can do that going to njspdc.com. Uh, there's a green tab right in the middle. It says request for counseling, and it connects you straight to your local um, SPDC office based on which county you reside in or do business in. Um, that's the main way. Otherwise, you can give us a call at any time, and we can, we can help you as well. But most people, uh, we, have to, we have to submit a form. It's an SBA-regulated form that they have to fill out that grabs you know, demographic information and things like that because we're funded by the SBA, so they want to know who we're helping in the first place. So that gets all the information up front. Once you get into the system, um, then usually you're connected either to a director or a consultant after that to start, to start working on whatever assistance you're needing. And so now, can you be too big? I mean, is there is there a limit? Is this the the uh, SBA uh, small business size, or or how big a business is 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 qualified? Well, it's it's a couple different terms. You know, the the federal definition is 500 or, or fewer employees, um, but they have extended that now based on revenue. So there there is a tool online through the SBA that you can either you can type in which industry you're in, how much you've done in sales, how many employees you have. And actually determine now even farther if you qualify as a small business or not. But you know, most typically you're looking at fairly large, you know, up to a fairly large amount of employees that we do we do service with our services here. Interesting. And and, and how long do you typically work with a with a business? You know that that that's a that comes into play with you know what where they are in the life cycle. So typically, you know, we do a lot of work with businesses on the front end. So you know, before they get open, of helping them work on the business plan, seeking financing, getting everything in place. Once they do open the doors, then it's you know helping them um, figure out their HR situation. You know, doing all those things, of grand opening, marketing, um, and then once they kind of get open, about you know six months down the road, then they tend to start operating on their own and then they may cycle back every six months a year um, kind of depending you know check-in check-in type of sessions but you know that's typically kind of how we see it go that once we we spend a lot of a lot of energy up front getting them open and then they sort of you know spread their wings go out on their own and as things come up in the course of business which they will that's when they tend to come back with those really specific questions uh, moving forward which is always kind of fun so so once you sign up you're you're in the database and you become a client Right, and then you can come back as needed based on availability, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And, and we like to, at this center, we, we really emphasize homework. So when a client does come into the center, when they meet with a consultant, um, the consultant usually will give them um, you know, a couple things of homework um, before they meet for the next session. Because we are taxpayer funded, we, we pay attention to that. So it's not just, you know, we're hanging out and having coffee once a week that, that we say, okay, you need to do X, Y, and Z. When that's completed, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z. And then we're gonna meet back in a week or two or a month or whatever it might be. And then, and then keep moving forward. And then usually we kind of like to establish, you know, uh, mile markers with the client. Say, so, okay, this is the homework for the next time. And this is where we're going. So if we're trying to get them financing, it's okay. We need to start working on the business plan. So let's get the first version drafted. We'll come back, we'll break it down and we'll build from there. So that's typically how we operate here. So, so, so I want to get, you know, probably in the second half of the show, we'll talk about some, maybe even some case examples of some of the projects that you've seen over the years in New Jersey, outside of New Jersey, et cetera, et cetera. So people have a real sense of, 
of how the SPD has, SPDC has helped folks. But you know, we'd love to really talk about the behind the scenes. So you know, the, you know, the SPDCs at universities can be at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Talk to me, because some people may be at universities, how can uh, professors or students uh, at a, a university where there's an SBDC, how can they interact most effectively with the SBDC so there's a mutually beneficial relationship? Yeah, as far as, as uh, you know, professors, oftentimes professors are some of the most valuable SBDC consultants. Oh, wonderful. Uh, because, you know, they're highly specialized. They know their field incredibly well. They may not be meeting with the people that are in the beginning stages of opening the business, but, you know, maybe they need access to someone that really understands, um, you know, information management systems or something like that, that they can make those connections with high level people that work in that field, have degrees in that field. Um, so that's that's a great way for um, for professors to be involved uh, with SBDCs. And then from the student side, you know, my experience, that's how I got in the SBDC as a, as a student intern. Um, but oftentimes, uh, SBDCs will have student interns that come in for special projects. They may they may be, you know, admin assistants that are in and around the SBDC so they get experience um, with all these clients coming in, all these industries, all these businesses. They may be brought in for very specific projects, um, either on the undergrad undergraduate level or the graduate level. Uh, they, they may also be, um, in my, my old center, we had a program where we would bring in uh, newly graduated um, MBA students that just just finished a degree to get some real world experience in the SBDC, you know, during the summer before they before they started to hit the job market. So there's a lot of ways you can integrate um, university resources um, into the SBDC. Well, wonderful. And again, I just think about I was an uh, you know an MBA student, and 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 doing that, it was just a, a great way to apply the theory that I was learning Absolutely. in class to a real world application. Which was uh, which was really 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 fantastic, and so so as as an SBDC, you know, um, the federal funding is not sufficient in and of itself. We raise money from other sponsors, and so over the over the years, what kinds of you know organizations companies sponsor uh, an SBDC, and why would they why would they want to sponsor an SBDC? Some of our best sponsors, you know, across the country, you know, SBDCs are really kind of connected to local bank branches yeah. um, and even to larger banks. And that's a great way to to get sponsorship and funding to the SBC, SBDC of hosting events and things like that, because, you know, a lot of our clients that we work with are going to be in front of a bank shortly looking for a loan. So that's a great way for the banks to not only reinvest in their communities, but also help build their brand image as well by working with SBDCs, because, you know, Every, every bank's a little different on what sorts of businesses they work with, what sorts of collateral, what sort of assets, those sort of industries that they do actually work with and loan money to, mm -hmm. that when SBDCs have a close working relationship with those financial institutions, it makes it a lot more successful for clients um, because we can make recommendations and say, you know, here are some possible lenders out there that can possibly go to talk to for your industry. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're at uh, the halfway point. So we're going to take a, a couple minute break for a commercial break. And we're going to come back with Matt Wells of the uh, FDU SBDC. My gifts are from the real real because I always feel very confident in what I get. I know it's been authenticated. The thrill of the hunt. They have things I never thought I'd see again. I'm gonna relish the gifts and the smiles. Top designers, up to 90% off retail. All I want for Christmas is Gucci. Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Prada, Rolex, Cartier. Real stuff at a really good price. Unwrap the unexpected with the real real. Shop over 10,000 new arrivals daily. Get 20% off at the real real. Terms apply. More than 200,000 people in the U.S have died from COVID-19. Hundreds more die every day, still an alarming rate of loss. Masks matter, these masks, they matter. It matters, it saves lives, it prevents the spread of the disease. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, with Matt Wells of the soon-to-be FDU Small Business Development Center. And uh, it really is a great program. If you have your own business, um, you've got to at least know the local Small Business Development Center. And so what I'd like to do, Matt, now is talk about maybe 
some real life examples, and obviously don't mention the names of the companies, but say around marketing. You know, you've worked with so many different companies yourself. If I had a company and I said, well, I, I really don't know what I need to do with marketing, um, you know, could you give an example of, of a company facing that kind of situation? I'll give you a couple here. I'll give you one on the small end and one on a little bit larger side. So okay. um, actually one of our best clients, um, they came in early, early in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, he was a service business. He was a face-to-face -face service business and um, he could no longer you know, perform his perform his services with his business because he couldn't meet with people. Mm. Um, and he kind of hit dire straits and, and he really, really didn't know what to do. So we, we not only helped him get access um, to fill out forms with PPP and do all those sorts of things to find some financial relief, we also re making him help him reevaluate his marketing proposition. Uh -huh. So we really reinforced, you know, not only the value of what he's doing, but really understanding his customers. And um, I was joking with him the other day um, because he sent me an email and I, I said, you know, think about the first email you sent me and now the email you sent me now. Mm -hmm. And all you were doing is talking about adding value and value and value to your business and how much more you've understood your customers. And, and from that, he's launched a new website, a social media um, campaign on, on all on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. And he's really sort of embraced marketing where he never ever thought about marketing prior to the pandemic and really prior to us having long conversations of, you know, if your business is here, how do we create value to bring more customers in? And through all this, he's had a huge intake of new clients coming in. Um, and his business is, is really getting set up to grow in the future because he's embraced marketing. Um, so that's on the small side. And from the larger so, so side, Matt, Matt we said, have look, Matt, come in that's, Matt, before you go to that one, you know, I mean, it, you know, it strikes me that you're, you're, you're like a hospital for small businesses. And that, <laughs> and that, you know, I just, I hear the sense of pride on your, you know, in your voice about being able to help them. They were kind of sick and now they're, they're, they're not only well, they're doing, uh, you know, better than ever. And so you really help the businesses turn around. I think that's really, really, really cool. And, um, um, and so you also helped with the, the PPP applications. Yes. Wow. And so, uh, again, just think about those businesses that were smart enough to take advantage of an SBDC resource uh, were able to, uh, to, to get some support in, in something that was, was pretty complex for, for many businesses. So that's the smaller side. What's, uh, what's the other example? Um, another example is, you know, on the larger side, we one of our great um, e-commerce consultants, he's been working with a client to redevelop the website and really, really push that side of it. So, you know, they're already up and going, they're a successful business, but he's, he's driving a whole new attitude towards they were sort of, they did some online sales prior to pandemic, but the pandemic has really sort of made them reevaluate that they have to be online. And they have to really focus and put a lot of effort and assets into understanding marketing, e-commerce, and driving sales online. So that's from the larger side. But they're still a very competent, you know, successful business. But they they're starting to really reevaluate re where their marketing efforts needs to be. So that's that's one of our, our great consultants. I've been working with them with some with some good results here. Wonderful. Pushing for e-commerce. Well, and 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 that's a, an e-commerce solution. Um, you know, I I think. Probably the majority of businesses have an e-commerce problem, right? Out of small yeah. businesses out there, they really don't know what they're doing and, and so on. So at a minimum, that, that kind of e-commerce, um, you know, that e-commerce e advice is, is so, uh, so critical. So obviously marketing is one area. Um, before we get to finance, um, personnel, have you ever helped them with any kind of personnel issues? Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of the issues that we, we've seen especially now there's a lot of issues with hiring and keeping right, and retaining right. staff. And, you know, we've had a lot of philosophical conversations with our clients of, you know, it's more than just the, this, just the wage, right? There's a lot of things that go into it. So, you know, we, right now we're having a lot of daily conversations with our clients of, okay, you need to, are you taking care of your employees? Are you hiring rights? And, you know, if, if you had people there that you hired that weren't doing the job, whose fault actually is it at the end of the day, right. you know, it's yours as the manager, you hired them or you didn't train them properly. So, either find some ways to train them or you need to hire properly. So we have a lot of those kind of philosophical philosophical conversations at the moment, um, especially in light of the, the issues we're having with uh, staffing across the country. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really is bad. And, and I imagine that it's even worse for small businesses. Yes. You know, to really try to get, because big businesses are struggling and, and small businesses are, are, are hurting as well. And so, uh, um, 
So, you know, financing, everybody talks about financing and, and, you know, I need money, I need investment, I need that. And I know you do some work with it, but there's also a capital group that's part of the statewide SBDC network. Talk a little bit about, about that. Yeah, so a lot of the centers, you know, they're connected to the local lending community, so local branches and things like that. But sometimes you'll have, you'll have um, clients that come into the center that are a little bit above what we handle regionally. Right. So, you know, maybe they're looking for venture capitalists or they're a tech firm looking to, you know, start an IPO. You know, there's a lot of things with that that we've established at the state level. Um, it's, it's a group called the Capital Team, and they're, they're high-level um you know, they have previous careers in the banking industry and investments um, in venture capitalism and their CPAs. And we have a big, big group there that has specialized connections um, all over the state. So if we can't handle people uh, regionally, if they're maybe they're, you know, very specialized service or need that they're looking for, um, or the, the funding opportunity may be more, say, in the software side, like tech and, and um, you know, e-commerce and those sorts of things that we can also refer up to our capital team and tap into those assets as well. Interesting. The, uh, yeah, and it's, it's uh, as I understand that, the SBDC network works together. So, um, you know, you're independent groups uh, at different universities, but you collaborate. Talk about the collaboration between the SBDCs. Yeah, so, so it's really cool. We, we've got some new state leadership that's really pushing us to sort of, um, you know, elevate ourselves as a network and be more, more unified as in our goals here. But also, you know, the SBDC network across the country, it's a pretty tight-knit community. I mean, th we're, we're connected to SBDCs all over the country. Um, and we take, we take you know, best practices from every place we can. We have an accreditation board that, that comes in um, on a couple year basis to make sure that our network is still, is still operating the best it can. Um, so it's a great network that not only is just in New Jersey or in your local community, but it's, it's literally across the country. And it's, it's a small network, but it's, it's a great network. And everybody within the SBDC network, I think across the country, you know, they're here to help small businesses. Um, this isn't a get get rich and and retire early type of a career. This is a career that you want to help people. You want to help your community, and I think everybody that usually is in the network um, they they feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's really as I'm learning this this network, and Kelly, who's been on my show, is just wonderful. So she really is very open. She, like you, has tremendous experience in in, in the SBDC world and in the Small Business Development Center. Um, and the opportunities, and she's an innovator to look at doing, uh, doing things very, very differently to benefit more and more organizations. And so as, as we start to work together with FDU and the Small Business Development Center, Matt, do you have some thoughts about you know, how we can make this you know, even more successful? You know, I'm, I'm competitive. I want this to be the most successful one in New Jersey. So what, what are some of the innovative things you think we can do and that the, the audience can look for as we kind of grow this SBD, this FDU SBDC? I think number one, it's it's very important for SBDC to have to have such a strong consultant base because it starts yeah. there. Because our, yeah. our job at the end of the day is is to serve the clients that are coming through the door. Yeah. So if we have if we have capable client or capable consultants we that you know that that can spread a wide range of their expertise um, and knowledge, that's where we start number one. And I think following that then is student engagement because right. you know there's there's entrepreneurs you know at heart for students they're looking to start businesses right now they're looking to venture out on their own especially in light of the pandemic it's made people kind of reevaluate what they want to do with their life right um so i think that's that's the second one is is the younger generation i think embrace entrepreneurship on a different level mm -hmm. it's it's a little more free flowing to them than than i think other generations have seen it as that um, so I think that's that's the second big step is is once once we lock down consultants, then the student engagement, and then I think the center can really really grow from there. Oh, interesting. The uh, how do we market it? What, what you have any thoughts on how do we how do we let folks know about this? I mean, obviously I'm out there. I'm, we're members of 17 different chambers across New Jersey. You know what 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 have been some of the best practices you've seen? in the national SBDC network about getting getting the word out. And I'm asking the same question about sponsorship. Yeah, so, you know, the probably the best way to drive traffic is word of mouth from other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go out there at every event and hand out flyers and business cards, but when you have somebody that owns a business talking to their friend that owns a business and say, hey, have you talked to them? 
Right. You know, that's that's the best marketing that we can have. So that's where it all kind of comes back to me that as long as we're supporting the clients and giving them the best service they can possibly get or get them directed to the services that they actually need, you know, that's where we really grow organically as a center. Um, but, you know, community outreach is a big is a big part of it. Working and having a good relationship with um, local lenders is another part because there's a there's a lot of people that will approach banks before they ever talk to us. Right. And that's usually not a good sign. If they're looking to get a loan from that business, you want to walk in there prepared, knowing what you're getting into, you know, have all your applications, have your business plan, have everything ready to go to know what you're going to be asking for. So that's that's a great relationship that, that we've, we've been building and, and will continue to build in the future with local um, lenders to make that referral because that's really our main pipeline um, that the SBA is looking for is, is our capital infusion that we can, we can get with our clients. So that's a great pipeline for us. And, and that's a measuring stick. So the, this idea of, of really how much um, how much you know capital have you infused into your network is that is that one of the uh, you know internal evaluation metrics? Yeah, that's one one of the things the SBA really pushes for us is is um, access to capital. You know, money that we help people get to open their business, invest in their business, um, invest in their communities. The other other major ones are you know jobs created, jobs retained. So if, if we're starting a new business, how many jobs are we helping create? Um, if we're helping somebody turn around their business or grow their business, how many jobs are we helping stay um, or you know keep long term with the business? Uh, they also look at you know the number of clients served. Um, they also look at demographic groups. Um, so right now they're really looking at women entrepreneurs, veteran entrepreneurs, minority entrepreneurs, uh -huh. and those are big emphasis with the SBA. So they're keeping track of all of those things as well, and and those are really emphasis that we try to do here. That's that's wonderful, and and so we've talked a little bit about banks as sponsors. What other what other industries do you think, or have you seen, are, are interested in sponsoring uh, an SBDC? So oftentimes we'll see we'll see sponsors that come through in you know their marketing firms or their law firms because you know they're, it's a direct way for them to reach their clients on, right. on a very very emotional level that that they're making a connection through the SBDC with those types of clients. So those are often places that we do we do see sponsorships come through from accounting firms, um, law firms, marketing firms, um, real, you know corporate uh, commercial real estate, um, those sorts of places. Often often uh, closely work with SBDCs and sponsor events too. The, um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's really, that's great because, uh, um, you know, entrepreneurship, you know, gone, as I said, gone are the 30-year jobs of, uh, you know, you go to General Motors, you work there for 30 years, you retire, you get a nice house in Florida, and, and you do that stuff. I'm, entrepreneurship is here to stay, and entrepreneurship is going to grow, and, and, and we're, we're really pushing this as uh, an economic strategy to reduce poverty. We're pushing this as a, an economic strategy to, uh, to improve communities and quality of life. So... I really believe that you know entrepreneurship is is on its rise, you know, in spite of a lot of government policies that push against it. And so I think an SBDC will have an even more important role going in the future than it has even in the in the past. I hope that you feel kind of the same way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think you know we're we're consultants at the end of the day, but a lot of times, like I said earlier, I mean, we're therapists. Right, People come right. in with their problems and we try to, we try to figure it out and, and let them kind of see the light through their own, um, you know, exploration into those things. So uh, at the end of the day, I, I really think that we, we promote an incredible service here because we're not emotionally attached to, you know, what the clients are doing. So sometimes right. we can see things from a different perspective, offer different insight, um, you know, based on whoever their consultant is, they'll have a, a ton of experience, like my experience of owning and operating uh, multiple retail locations. Right. You know, when I have clients that are looking in that sector, I can tell them real world examples of what I've been through, you know, signing lease negotiations and all these sorts of things. And that's our biggest benefit is, is we've been through a lot of these things. We've seen a lot of these things um, and we, we can help clients kind of see that as well. Well, uh, and I hope the audience who are entrepreneurs are hearing, there's no excuse not to at least contact your local SBDC. And so, Matt, if, uh, again, how do people find um, the SBDC? So the best way to do it is, is if you're in New Jersey, go to njsbdc.com. Uh, you can register and search for the local uh, SBDC uh, center that's within your county region. Um, if you're outside of New Jersey, uh, you'll have a state website as well that will list all of your NJ or all of your SBDC centers uh, within that state and satellite offices that you can get a hold of as well. Well, Matt, it's, it's been great. We're at the end of time now. Um, um, you know, I just love the way you answer. You have so much information, and you do it such a, in such a concise way. So I really thank you very much. I'm really excited about working together. We're really going to do some big things, I think, in 2022. And I want to thank the audience to, for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind. I hope you learned something. I hope you check out the SBDC network. 
And if you're not an entrepreneur, tell some friends that could really use some, uh, some advice about SBDCs. So take care, and we will see you next week.